simply adding new dots to the map isn't the way to go. That's the way man has tried to live for eons. And it hasn't stopped war. It hasn't stopped pain and suffering because they haven't broken the process. They've simply been trying to figure out, okay, well, which which attachments do we need to have on this map? Because these ones are bad. And the atheists believe, oh, well, having an attachment to religion is bad. And, uh, you know, the the... Muslims think, oh, having an attachment to Christianity is bad. And the Christians think, oh, having an attachment to Islam is bad. And so we need to figure out what the right attachments are that we can have on this that create a better society, a better world, etc. And they don't realize that breaking this whole process is the key to liberation. It's the key to world peace. It's the key to inner peace. It's the key to ending personal pain and suffering and pain and suffering throughout the world and mass. Hello there. I hope things are well for you. This week we are coming with an episode to talk about not letting the tail wag the dog. Go. Hey, welcome to the I Am Podcast, where we answer all the questions about spirituality and inner peace that you ever wanted to ask. I am your host, Sean Webb. Okay, so, the tail wagging the dog. What are we talking about when we're talking about the tail wagging the dog in spirituality? Okay. Well, the process of enlightenment, awakening into what is that is beyond our normal waking consciousness, has to do with realizing our false self versus our true self. And the false self is the self of the mind that has all the attachments and we explain the whole process of pain and suffering in the Body, Mind, Spirit 101 in the first 20 episodes of this podcast or 25 episodes or so. The sense of self is this brain's function. If we're going to survive in the world an extra day, we need to be able to understand and define our world. But in order to also survive another day, we also need to be able to understand and define ourselves. We need to understand how far we can jump, how fast we can run, how far we can throw the portions of our existence that are important for our survival, such as our family or our tribe or whatever. All these things become attachments of mind that help us understand how to better survive this day, the next day, etc. And so this sense of self becomes this bank of things, this laundry list of items that our brain then says, okay, we need to defend all this stuff. And a thousand years ago it was important because if you're constantly reviewing the list of things that is you and you're constantly reviewing the things that are in danger, that is, of course, a beneficial process of survival. But now we have things like television, um, jobs, uh, cognitive attachments to sports teams or to political views or to religious organizations or whatever it is that then become catalysts of pain and suffering or catalysts of um, uh, negative emotions based on the fact that we think we have to defend those things as well. And it becomes a process of our brain that kind of goes off the tracks a little bit. Okay, so... In our discussion of the tail wagging the dog, the process of enlightenment is awakening to the falseness of this self, of all of these points on this attachment map, and the fact that we are not what we perceive ourselves to be in our mind, but we are something more, something uh, that is transcendent of the mind's process of defining self. And so this thing... When you pass through the Enlightenment experience, this thing basically gets wiped clean. There are no attachments on this map. And at any moment that you are in God mind or Buddhahood or whatever you want to call it, you are attached to absolutely nothing. And it's at that point that you understand that you are one with everything. You're a part of everything that exists in the universe. There is nothing that is not you. There is no part of the universe that would be complete without you. Um, A whole big prophetic list of realizations that you then come into based on this awakening experience. Now, 
here's where the tail wags the dog. If you are in this false mindset space, if you're in this false self arena, and you attempt to put on the ideas of spirituality, such as you're existing in this world and then all of a sudden, boop, another dot gets added, I am one with everything. Well, that's simply a belief that you're trying to put on. It's simply an understanding that you listen that spiritual masters have said that you're simply trying to add to your attachment map. And you understand that you're trying to remove these attachments and you understand that these things create your pain and suffering. But at the same time, you're still living in this whole existence. You're still living in this world of attachment. You're still living in this world of the false self. But you're trying to put on these spiritual attachments that you know, I'm one with everything. I'm one with God. God is everywhere. God is everything within everyone. It's the life force, and we're all awesome, and yay, isn't this great? Well, that's simply another attachment that you're putting on or that some people put on to try to get to this thing called spirituality. And it's at that point that the tail is trying to wag the dog. You're trying to go from a point of attaching to these things more vehemently than these other things, and that is going to create your spiritual existence. Well, the reality is, until you break this whole process en masse, you won't fully get the dog wagging the tail. You won't get that transition, that change, that transformation from who you were, who and what you were yesterday, to the reality and the realization of who and what you actually are, which is none of these attachments on this attachment map. So we get into these new age things and we listen to these masters of spirituality or of existence or whatever you want to call them, and we try to implement the thoughts and the ideas onto this attachment map. But the reality is, until we experience the self that is beyond this false self of attachment and sense of self in the mind, etc., until we actually experience that and see it for ourselves, we can't really replace this until we have something else to replace it with. It is a function of the brain to create a sense of self so that we can understand ourselves and the world and survive an extra day. And the brain won't let us go without this sense of self. So it's going to create one for us. The problem with that is that you can't replace it until you have something else to replace it with. And, of course, we know that getting that something else to replace it with is part of the process of meditation. It's part of the process of introspection. It's part of the process of quieting the mind and seeing the thing that exists just beyond the mind, hearing the noises and the sounds of the universe that exist just beyond the noise and the sounds of your own voice in your head and your own mind. You shut that off and then you're able to hear what exists just beyond. Well, it's at that point of awakening. It's at that point of realization. It's at that point of experiencing the true self or the self that exists beyond this mind self that then that experience that awakening that um, new self can replace this old self and so we need to be careful as we move forward that in our search we're not just trying to put more attachments on this map that we think are congruent with spirituality or we think that are congruent with awakening. The reality of our existence is that until we replace this thing as a whole, we won't be able to realize and be able to take off these attachments that cause our pain and suffering. And so until we have that alternate awakening, the self that replaces the mindful self, it will be a battle of the tail trying to wag the dog, which will not be effective in awakening or learning or growing because you're not breaking this process. 
The path to true liberation is to break this whole process, to break the attachments that your mind thinks it needs to have that feed into the equation of emotion. Every one of these attachments, of course, feeds into the ex expectation or preference that emotions use to come into being. And then we have the, the perception and the appraisal of the world and things acting upon our attachments. It comes into our perception and then it, that creates an emotional reaction. Well, that's how it works scientifically. Until we break the whole process of where our expectations and preferences come from in these attachments of mind, we're going to be struggling with this whole system. We're going to be struggling with this process. And simply adding new dots to the map isn't the way to go. That's the way man has tried to live for eons and it hasn't stopped war it hasn't stopped pain and suffering because they haven't broken the process they've simply been trying to figure out okay well which which attachments do we need to have on this map because these ones are bad and the atheists believe oh well having an attachment to religion is bad and uh you know the the Muslims think, oh, having an attachment to Christianity is bad. And Christians think, oh, having an attachment to Islam is bad. And so we need to figure out what the right attachments are that we can have on this that create a better society, a better world, etc. And they don't realize that breaking this whole process is the key to liberation. It's the key to world peace. It's the key to inner peace. It's the key to ending personal pain and suffering and pain and suffering throughout the world and mass. And so as we learn and move forward, it is important for us to remember not to put on new attachments of ideas that sound good or that sound spiritual or that sound like it would be on the path to awakening. The key to awakening, the key to spirituality is in silencing the mind and getting past these attachments, getting past this whole process to realize and to experience the real self that comes in and supplants the fake false self that's full of attachments. And so don't let your tail wag your dog or attempt to. Don't try to put on those attachments that you think are right or that you think sound good or that you think will help you. Dig deeper. Get down into yourself. Know thyself is a huge lesson that permeates all of the world's religions. And I think it was William James that said, there is no worse lie than a truth misunderstood by those who hear it. And so when you're talking about spirituality, don't misunderstand the truth that you need to just put the right attachments on your map and then everything's going to be good. The idea is you have to break this map entirely. And the only way to break it is to be able to replace it with experiencing your true self through quieting of the mind, through meditation, through reaching out and feeling your true existence beyond the machinations of your mind. And that is what awakening is all about. Because the point that um, you start adding points to these maps right you start adding spiritual things to this map you're you're simply adding the good stuff in with the bad stuff and i think it was uh matsu um hold on here i can probably find that quote uh matsu said when you are deluded you have lost sight of your original mind when you are enlightened you have found your original mind and you never become deluded again it is like when the sun comes out it does not combine with darkness. When the sunlight of wisdom and knowledge emerges, it does not combine with darkness and delusion. It replaces it. Now, that it replaces it was something that I just added at the very end of Matsu's quote, but the sunlight, the awakening, doesn't mix with the confusion and the turmoil and the yada, yada, yada of our mindful self in the process that creates our pain and suffering. It replaces it altogether. And so as you listen to these podcasts or other masters podcasts or read their books or listen to their words or you're in this search for spirituality or your inner truth or your inner peace or whatever it is, don't 
just put these ideas on as attachments of self. Certainly keep them in mind. Certainly put them in there where you can have access to them because you'll have two levels of understanding. You'll have one level of understanding pre-awakening, and then you'll have a whole level of other understanding post-awakening. Get to that point of awakening. Close down the thought processes in your mind. Quiet all of the noise within yourself by using a meditative practice. And it could be one of um, almost a dozen meditative practices. You don't have to just sit in meditation. You can walk in meditation. You can do Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, dancing, fasting. There's all kinds of meditative practices that allow you to cease your conscious thought and get into that space where you can realize the true self that replaces the false self. And that is when awakening occurs. That's when your, your spiritual existence becomes second nature or first nature, really. So don't let your tail wag your dog. Take these lessons, integrate them into your life, but don't add them to your attachment map. Get rid of the attachment map altogether. I hope this message finds you guys well. Hope you're having a great week if you want to support this podcast. And by the way, thank you to John H. And also Robert G. Thank you very much as well for your contributions. Um, And uh, if you want to support the podcast by supporting yourself, you can go to Audible. Dot com. It's uh, audibletrial.com slash I am spirituality. Gets you a free book on the 30 day free trial. I've been a member since 2006. They're friggin' awesome. The author reads their own book to you in their own voice. So you can hear the inflection, you can hear the emphasis on certain things, or a professional voice actor will sometimes read their books, which is awesome as well because they're good at what they do. So check them out audibletrial.com slash I am spirituality. They have thousands of spiritual books that are great. And I have a reading list on I am spirituality.com that you can check out and get ideas for good spiritual books that you can read. I have one coming out later this year. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be an awesome one. Hope things are well for you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Peace.